assume that people that are migrating to the U.S. are from Central and South America. And primarily that is true. But we don't hear the stories of Africans and uh, Asians that are coming to the U.S. through South America, uh, overland primarily, um, to reach the United States and Canada. Over the past few years, migration has become nearly synonymous with crisis. People move to flee war and other violence in their home countries. But part of this crisis is also countries, in response, tightening their migration rules to deter migrants and refugees from entering. As problems around the world become more frequent, and as nearby countries lock down, people on the move have to look elsewhere. Kim Wilson, along with researchers from the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy, spent over a year investigating this other migration. The team worked in South and Central America, interviewing international migrants originally from Africa and Asia who traveled from the other side of the world into South America in the hopes of eventually entering the U.S. and Canada. People are mainly coming from South Asia. That includes Nepal, India, Bangladesh, uh, and Pakistan. And they were also coming from the Horn of Africa, Eritrea and um, Ethiopia predominantly. We also saw, uh, talked to people from Sudan. And then many, many people from West Africa. Um, so for example, if I'm from Nepal, I might go to Delhi and then from Delhi take a, a chain of flights that get me to Ecuador. And if I'm from, let's say, Cameroon, I might get as far as uh, Nigeria and then take a bus, bus south to uh, South Africa and then a flight to Brazil and then from there take a bus to Ecuador. Um, and then from Ecuador, it's, it's the route north. It's Ecuador, uh, Colombia, Panama, Costa Rica, um, and beyond. This other migration is happening for several reasons. Factors like home country violence, poverty, or simply family expectation to succeed push people out of their home countries in search of better living conditions. But these aren't the only variables. There are a series of complex push and pull factors that cause migrants and refugees to leave home and start their journeys in South America. So some of the push factors were that um, people literally felt either pushed out by their families because the families had created a set of expectations that they would leave and that they would go work. Um, and so that was particularly true for, for people from South Asia and very specifically from Nepal. Um, another factor was grinding poverty, lack of opportunity. Um, in many of the cases in West Africa, people had what seemed to be very tight cases around persecution, um, either persecution around uh, events like land disputes and bloodshed, but also war, especially in Cameroon, where the Anglophones whom we interviewed were um, going to present a credible fear argument at the U.S. border because of the, the Francophone uh, persecution. So we saw a mix of reasons um, of why people were pushed out. But then I think the question is, well, why, why were they pulled to the U.S. or Canada, those that we talked to? So we didn't intercept people in Brazil who might have been staying in Brazil. And we didn't talk to people in Ecuador who might have elected to stay in Ecuador. We saw the people that were continuing to move. And they felt that the economic opportunity and educational opportunities in the U.S. would be better than, say, Costa Rica or, um, or Colombia. So we know who is traveling and why they're leaving their home countries headed for the U.S. But a major complication in this journey comes down to what countries will let you in. Countries like the U.S. and Canada have strict immigration laws which attempt to limit who can enter the country. The journey would be much easier if you could just fly from West Africa or South Asia and move to the U.S. Because this isn't the case, migrants have to find other starting points. So it's easy to get an entry visa in a country like Ecuador if you have a certain country of origin. And it's easy to get uh, entry into Brazil if you are from other countries of origin. So you put those together and most countries of origin are covered in these lax visa ports of entry. So you can either get a, tur a three month tourist visa very easily or some kind of on-arrival visa fairly easily, for example, in Ecuador. Knowing who was traveling and why tells part of the story. 
But when you zoom in on some of the details, a different story emerges. The route from South America to North America includes dangers like open ocean boat journeys, a hike through one of the world's deadliest jungles, and countless border crossings. Up next, learn about how migrants financially prepare for and acquire money along the route. And later, take a look at the Darien Gap and its dangers.